downforce in Gran Turismo 7, it really matters. In this video, I'm gonna go through everything you need to know about downforce settings in Gran Turismo 7. I'm gonna run back to back tests, side by side comparisons to let you know everything you need to know about downforce in Gran Turismo 7, how to set the car right, whether to use high downforce, low downforce, aero balance to make sure you don't set your car to be undrivable like this example here. So downforce is a vertical or downward load that is applied to the car through the aerodynamic devices on the car. Now the example on screen right now, the highly downforced uh, Red Bull X 2019 car, the LMP cars, they're all very tuned specifically to generate downforce, which gives you grip in the corners. But in Gran Turismo 7, you can also apply various uh, GT Auto tuning parts to your road cars, which give you downforce. The uh, test car in this video for the low downforce kind of tuning is going to be the Ferrari. Uh, I've not driven this car before, so it'd be a very interesting car to drive. Uh, and yeah, let's see what we can do with it in completely stock form going to the tuning page uh the car has downforce it has some downforce numbers but they are not changeable so this is the static downforce that the the, the car shape uh, generates uh going to gt auto uh, going to the uh custom part section we can apply front side rear and wing uh, elements to this these all have an effect on uh, tuning and performance uh, in this example we're going to go for a front front splitter uh, we're going to add the side skirts. Uh, for what it's worth, guys, the side skirts have no effect on performance at all. Uh, some cars have a rear diffuser. This one doesn't. And then finally, you've got the rear wing, uh, for which we have two types of rear wing available. Uh, we're going to see what changes each of these uh, different types of rear wings do. Um, so first of all, we're going to put type A rear wing on the car. Uh, 450, uh, 4,500 credits. Uh, and let's uh, see what changes. So going over here, the numbers are in white, so we can change them now. Uh, so we've got a range of tuning uh, options available here for the front and the rear. Now, these downforce numbers, these are just arbitrary numbers, uh, downforce points, let's call them. Uh, but this is comparable between all cars. So we're going to see in the tuning shop again, does the uh, other rear wing make any difference at all? So we're just going to throw the uh, larger rear wing on it. Uh, differences between this rear wing, the variance within that option uh, don't change at all. Uh, but looking at the performance points, the front hasn't changed. Uh, but the top end of the uh, downforce points available for the rear wing actually has changed. With the standard uh, one, it was locked. With the mid layer type A wing, uh, it was maximum at 450. Uh, but now we can go all the way up to 500 uh, downforce points. Let's compare that with a few other vehicles. So the Porsche 919 Hybrid, uh, it has got a huge amount of downforce points. So we've got up to 1,400 uh, for, for the front and up to 1,800 for the rear. Uh, that was my uh, Suzuka setup. So I used quite a high downforce setup on that one. Uh, let's choose a few other cars, see what kind of ballpark we've got here. Uh, I know a good high downforce car is the Super Formula car. Uh, so let's see what ranges that he's here. And that has got 1,400, 1,500 is the maximum on the front, uh, 2,000 on the rear. So that is an incredibly high downforce car. Uh, let's now take a look at the um, 25th anniversary Red Bull X 2019 car. Um, let's see what options we've got for this one. And yeah, 1,000. That's actually less downforce than I thought there would be from that car. I think the, the X2019, the competition version, has a bit less downforce than the super extreme one. So, yeah, downforce numbers can be compared between other cars. Now, let's see how they perform on the track. Side by side now, I've got low downforce on the left, high downforce on the right. And you can see from the in-car view, you can see the steering inputs. On the brakes, um, it looks like we're a bit deep with a low downforce setting. And yeah, just look at the steering inputs between both cars. Uh, a lot harder to drive on corner exits with the low downforce cars. A massive amount of rear swaz on corner exit there. Um, even this car just generally felt slippery. Aside from uh, the wings and downforce tuning, there was no other tuning on the car at all. Incredibly fun to drive, but not particularly fast uh, around the track at least. Anyway, top speed was actually fantastic. Uh, through these uh, kind of mid-speed corners 
Um, this is where I felt the downforce the most, rolling back onto the throttle with the high downforce setup. The car was much more planted with the low downforce, even these sweeps through the back stretch at uh, Sardinia. Every corner had to be considered. It was almost a, a real wrestle. Uh, X in the low speed corners, slight less of a difference between the two, um, but I could still feel it. The downforce was working really well. On these lower downforce cars, the road cars where you add wings to them, I think going for maximum downforce really helps the cars out. When you're already short on general downforce, um, yeah, the, the low downforce cars really need the maximum amount of downforce possible. And as you can see now, the high downforce setup is not only easier to drive, but it's also faster on the lap time. We're about a second, over a second up now. Um, top speed wise, I think we lost about 10 to 15 kilometers an hour with the high downforce setup, but the, the ease of drivability of the car was second to none. You, you can't beat uh, the way the car drives with the high downforce setup. Let's go on the other end of the scale now. So this is the high downforce super formula car. On the left, it's in low downforce configuration. On the right, it's on high downforce configuration. And we're gonna compare these two lap times side by side again into turn one. Similarly, I think there's about a, a 10 to 15, uh, maybe 20 kilometers an hour difference uh, in favor of the low downforce car. Um, and then through a lot of the twisty corners. Because the car already has a lot of downforce, even when you run uh, minimum downforce settings, it's still got a very high downforce uh, points number it still grips really well i think the most important thing on high downforce cars maybe group two upwards group ones any of the uh, uh, high speed vgt cars i think the most important thing with these cars is actually the aero balance rather than the actual downforce and we'll get to that a little bit later uh, rounding out the lap time we are just fractionally up with the low downforce car here uh, Rewatch both of these two side by sides and take notes on uh, top speeds and stuff um, but through this kink here easily flat for both of them um, if there was a difference between the two cars maybe the high downforce would have gained through there but even on the lowest downforce setting corners that were flat were still flat there was no problem there at all coming on to the uh, main straight now uh, this is where you would probably have uh, difficulties if your downforce or aero balance was a little bit off and then yeah, we're faster with the uh, low downforce car by quite a considerable margin. So that seems pretty inconclusive really, doesn't it? So the takeaway from this is my recommendation for high downforce cars, group two and above, then it's you've got, always gonna have enough downforce. You need to tune the car to be appropriate for the track. If you're running at Monza, for example, you'd probably run a low downforce setup. You'd probably gain more time on the straights than you could possibly gain through the corners. But the most important thing with the high downforce cars is aero balance. And that comes down to how stable the car is uh, through the high speed and mid speed corners. It's very easy with these high downforce cars to run uh, an aero balance that's too far forwards where you get a bit of oversteer at high speed and the car is completely uncontrollable. Uh, more downforce at the front is more steering in the high speed corners. Uh, more downforce at the rear is more understeer in those high speed corners. So work on the aero balance between the front and the rear downforce to get to a point where you're safe through the corners. The car is never gonna to want to snap at high speed because that is unsavable at these kind of speeds, but you don't want a car that understeers a, a huge amount. With the road cars or with the lower downforce cars, so maybe group three at a maximum, group four, at any of the road cars, it seems that downforce or adding uh, downforce points or parts to the car which can give you more downforce is really beneficial. For the subtle um, sacrifice of top speeds, you gain a lot more drivability and it just makes the car a lot more easier to drive. You've got more confidence in the car. You can be more consistent with your lap times, less likely to make big errors. And it's just a lot easier to drive, a lot less work at the steering wheel. It's all good. So I'd highly recommend any of the road cars adding downforce, using the, almost a the maximum downforce, and then tune to get the aero balance from there. The aero balance is a lot less critical on these road cars because when you do get a snap of oversteer, it's a lot more catchable, it's a lot more savable, everything happens a lot slower. I open the floor to the channel members to ask me questions for what they were like answering in this downforce video. Uh, so hopefully Neil, uh, downforce on the lower downforce cars 
use it almost as high as possible on the higher downforce cars like group 2 group 1 and anything more downforce than that tune it to be specific for the track but the aero balance is probably most important question from martin the effect on downforce on tire and fuel usage and specifically the effect that downforce has on turning i did start to test fuel and tire usage but at the moment it was a little bit inconclusive i'm gonna have to make a follow-up video to really get to the bottom of that but i don't think it had a significant effect uh, expect more from me on that one with regard to turning i think it is more the most downforce you can possibly have or the most aero balance to the front you can run the better it is up until the point where the car becomes too difficult to drive at high speed or mid speed corners where you start to lose the rear. If you would like to join as a channel member all of the link and details will be in the description below. If you have found this video useful then make sure you smash that like button, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. On screen right now you'll find links to videos which are just as useful as this one. Make sure you go and check those ones out and we'll catch you in the next one.